Hello, we welcome you to this Bible study of the Banking Blessings Ministry. In this Bible study, we are going to look at civil rights and responsibilities using as an example the series of trials that Paul was subjected to from in Jerusalem, Caesarea, and eventually ending up in Rome. We will learn about the respect for civil rights and responsibilities and that when we respect civil rights, our civil rights, it helps us recognize our, civil, our responsibilities and we, it helps us fulfill God's purpose of protecting good from evil. Uh, and we're going to base this on Paul's trial which started in Jerusalem and then eventually was transferred to Caesarea and from Caesarea he was transferred to Rome. We will also look at the subsequent letter, Paul's letter to Romans when he talked about a former, when he gave a former uh, presentation of uh, the basis for respect for civil rights and civil responsibilities. Everything we do tonight will come from the book of Acts, chapters 21 through 28, and then a small section of Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 13. We will begin with Paul's letter to the Romans, which describes the guiding principles for civil rights and responsibilities. Of course, the key civil responsibility is respect for constituted authority. And Paul wrote this letter to explain that God expects us to respect constituted authority because every authority has been established by God to serve the good of the people and to punish the wrongdoers of the society. Therefore, we are supposed to respect the established authority, such as through payment of taxes, respect and honor uh, for people in positions of authority. Let us read about this in Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Romans 13, verse 1. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Well, this was Paul's letter uh, to the Romans where he talked about respect for authority. And we are going to use his trials 
in Jerusalem through Rome to study his example of showing respect for authority and his respect for authority also led him to recognize his rights to respect his rights to insist on his rights or assert his rights as necessary of course he also res uh, respected the rights of other people so in each case one of the things we're going to see is that there is a close relationship between your recognition of your civil rights your respect for your civil rights and your respect for constituted authority. Paul, during these pro, uh, trials in Jerusalem and, and uh, Jerusalem, Caesarea and Rome, he showed respect for authority, respect for the customs of his people, respect for the laws of the society. But all of these being wrapped up in respect for the individuals that are given the responsibility to to discharge these laws, to, to administer these laws. Paul showed respect at every stage and claimed his civil rights whenever necessary. And we will see that he prevailed at every stage of the process. We will begin with the case against Paul and his arrest in Jerusalem where well, Paul had spent a lot of time in Asia and had just come back to Jerusalem against the advice of many of his followers. And uh, while in Jerusalem they advised him to purify himself before going to the temple and he did exactly that and that is one at the beginning of his respect for constituted authority. He knew that it was the custom of the Jews to be, they, they needed, they expected people to be purified, to be ceremonially pure, they called it, before coming to the temple. So he went through the process and then went to the temple to worship. Well, while at the temple, some Jews from Asia saw him, recognized him, and then started up trouble among other Jews. They said, oh, men of Israel, this is the man who has been preaching against our custom, preaching against our laws, preaching against this, this place, meaning the temple. So they called for help, and people came, arrested Paul, the mob arrested Paul, who wasn't really arrested by any uh, law enforcement agents, but the, the people arrested him, dragged him, and dragged him out of the temple and uh, started molesting him, really intending to kill Paul. The commander of uh, the nearby Roman garrison, Roman army, heard about the commotion, took a few soldiers with him and came to the head of Paul. So when he got there, he arrested Paul and then asked them what he did. Um, in the process, he found out that they didn't really have any specific charge. He couldn't find out what was going on because, because of the mob action. People were shouting different things. Let us read about this in Acts chapter 21, verses 27 to 36. Acts 21, an IV version verse 27 when the seven days were nearly over some jews from the province of asia saw paul at the temple they stirred up the whole crowd and seized him shouting fellow israelites help us this is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law and this place and besides he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, in the city with Paul and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. The whole city was aroused and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple 
and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, news reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing and some another. And since the commander could not get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great, he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd that followed kept shouting, Get rid of him! Well, uh, the commander had taken Paul from the crowd. Uh, in fact, his action rescued Paul from the crowd because they were going to kill him. Of course, he did not really intend to rescue him. He just wanted to restore order. Then, as they were leading him up the stairs, uh, Paul turned around and asked the commander for permission to speak. And this is the first the second act of respect, he knows that the commander at that point in time was the person of authority. So he asked him for permission, he said, can you let me speak? The commander asked him if he could uh, speak Greek and then asked him whether he was the Egyptian that the, he had the story of an Egyptian that led 4,000 terrorists into the desert, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> I think he was dealing with the wrong time, but anyway, Paul said, Paul didn't answer that, but just told him that he is a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, and, and told him that he is a citizen of no ordinary city, essentially saying he is from a respectable city, Tarsus in Cilicia. So, when the commander allowed him to speak then, he turned to the crowd and told them essentially that he is a good citizen, that he is a citizen of Tarsus in Cilicia, and that he was educated in Jewish law and customs. He mentioned his education under law teacher Gamaliel, that was one of the highly recognized teachers of, of their time and he said that he has been uh, that he was at some point just as zealous as they were uh, to protect the law to protect zealous for god through the law zealous for their customs until that this the way he was until he was converted to christ so let us read about this in Acts 21, 37 to 40, and then Acts 22, 1 to 21. But in Acts 22, we will only read verses 1 through 5, because it's a long section. As the soldiers were about to take Paul into the barracks, he asked the commander, May I say something to you? Do you speak Greek? He replied. Aren't you the Egyptian who started a revolt and led 4,000 terrorists out into the wilderness some time ago? Paul answered, I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no ordinary city. Please let me speak to the people. After receiving the commander's permission, Paul stood on the steps and motioned to the crowd. When they were all silent, he said to, he said to them in Aramaic, Brothers and fathers, listen now to my defense. 
when they heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. I persecuted the followers of this way to their death arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. As the high priest and all the council can themselves testify, I even obtained letters from them to their associates in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. Well, let us step back a little and summarize what, what Paul said to the crowd. He told them he's a Jewish. He told them he's a good and respectable citizen. That's why he told them he was trained in the law of the people. He was trained by a highly respected teacher of the law, Gamaliel. Then he he demonstrated civil responsibility to show that he is somebody that is a responsible citizen, that he has respect for their, for their laws and, and their customs. And that because of this, that he is entitled to protection under the law and the treatment as a good citizen. So this is basically all of what he told them was to sort of deliver this message that I'm entitled to, I'm a, a good citizen, I'm a respectable citizen, I respect civil responsibilities, and I've shown myself to be responsible uh, to our customs and to our laws. Therefore, I'm entitled to protection under the law and to treatment as a good citizen. Well, the commander tried to find out what was going on and felt that Paul wasn't uh, being forthcoming with him, that Paul wasn't telling him, that Paul had more to tell him that he wasn't telling. So he directed that Paul should be flogged and questioned at the same time to extract more information from him. He essentially, he said they should torture Paul. Then at that point, Paul asked them whether it is legal to punish a Roman citizen with, with, before you find him guilty. He asked, is it, is it legal to flog a, human, a Roman citizen without finding him guilty? Then that um, startled them because they did not know he was a Roman citizen. And the, the soldier that he, he talked to immediately stopped, and then asked the letter, told the commander what he said. Then the commander asked him, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, yes, he's a Roman citizen by birth. And the commander remarked that he paid a lot of money for his own citizenship where Paul said that he was born a citizen. So, essentially, by telling them he's a Roman citizen, he's saying, look, I have the right to be treated fairly under the law. And one of the requirements is that you cannot punish a Roman citizen who has not been found guilty of any crime. So he claimed protection under this law. You cannot flog me because you haven't found me guilty of any crime. And that worked. He, they, they stopped immediately. They realized they could not legally flog him. They could not legally torture him. So they stopped. Let us read about this in Acts chapter 22, verses 23 to 29, oh, we decided that this is a long section, so we are not going to read it. I hope that you take some time to read it. Well, the commander 
uh, decided to put Paul up against the Sanhedrin, this is the full council of Israeli leaders. And the intention there was for them to question him and for him to sort of see if they can bring out, if they can give him any information about what this man did wrong. Well, uh, when Paul got to the Sanhedrin, he had a confrontation with Ananias. But when he realized that Ananias was the high priest, he immediately withdrew from the confrontation. He stopped. And then he said, oh, he didn't know that Ananias was the high priest. And then cited a Bible passage where it was said that you have to show respect to the leader of the people. Then Paul told them that he's a Pharisee, that the reason he was being put on trial was because he, because of the Pharisees' belief in resurrection of the dead. And, and this actually created a, an argument, not between them and Paul, but between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees believe in resurrection of the dead, and the Sadducees did not. So this started an argument between them. And then, um, again, the, the, when the commander saw that this was uh, getting out of hand, he pulled, he went and took Paul away from them again. This is recorded in Acts chapter 23, verses 1 to 10. But we are not going to read it during this session. Well, it was after this encounter, after this um, interaction with the Sanhedrin, in the night, uh, the Lord appeared to Paul and encouraged him and said, Look, um, the same way that you have testified about me in Jerusalem, you are going to testify about me in Rome. So he encouraged, the Lord Jesus appeared to Paul and encouraged him, essentially telling him that, approving what he was doing, that, hey, you know, I am happy with what you did and I encourage you to continue. You are going to testify in Rome the same way that you testified in Jerusalem. So Paul got this encouragement in addition to the promise that he was going to go to Rome. This is in Acts 23, verse 11. The following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. Well, this brings us to the end of the first part of this video, the first part of the Bible study. The Bible study is being recorded in two parts. We we'll just finished the first part. I encourage you to participate in part two. Uh, what we've done is we've laid out, um, told briefly the trial in Jerusalem but the trial is going to continue. Paul is going to be transferred to Caesarea. And then we'll see what happens when we start section two. We thank you for participating in section one. Urge you to participate in section two. And God bless you.